Come on and sing, we'll sing. Come on and sing, yeah, sing. All make up, we'll win. We love the Lord. Will we raise our hand? Yeah, we raise our hand. We'll raise our hand. Yes, we raise our hand. All because we love, we love the Lord. We'll come on and sing. We'll sing. Come on and sing. We'll sing it because, because, because we love the I have a home prepared with the saints of by just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Well, just over in the glory land. Oh, I'm torn and yes, I'm torn. That happy, happy angel band just over in the glory land. Oh, just over, over in the glory land. Oh, there with this, with the mighty, I'm gonna stand just over in the glory land. And I am on my way to those mansions fair just. I'm a gonna stand just over in the glory land and just over in the glory land. Oh, I'm a gonna join that happy, happy angel band just over in the glory land. Oh, just I'm a just an over in the the glory. With the mighty, I'm gonna stand just over in the glory land. And the church said, Amen. Dear God in heaven, you are so great, and we are just like that. You are so good that I am a sinner. You are so majestic and, and wonderful, and we are just humble creations, but you still love us, and you still sent your son Jesus to rescue us from our own sins, and we're so thankful for that. Father, help us do your will on earth here like your will is done in heaven, and forgive us of our sins. And Father, we're praying now for all of us, and especially for Mike Militello with his, his digestive problems and Joyce Harrison who fell and broke some bones. Father, you, we know that you can heal bodies and you can heal souls. And we're asking you to keep us whole. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Please be seated. Well, how good it is to be together. Welcome this morning to our worship service here at Vaughn Hill. Didn't God give us a beautiful morning to come out and just to enjoy worship and pray this day can just be about him. I know you brought with you a lot of things in your heart and a lot of things in your life. And those are important. In fact, the Bible says you can give those things to God. And I'd encourage you to do that this morning. 
But just make this worship about the God. Just make, just make this day about God, and I know that we will be blessed. Well, there's lots of things taking place and happening. I want to point you to, for, once again to the sermon notes that are out there in, on the Welcome Center. They're there every single Sunday for you. They kind of follow along with the sermon. If you're a person that likes to go a little bit deeper, those are there for you and would love for you to grab those. Well, each year, the Maryland Heights Congregation over in St. Louis hosts a, a area-wide praise and worship service. That is today. It starts at 5 o'clock. If you want to go, I'm going to take a group over at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock is when we are leaving to get over there. Usually the building is packed full, and so if we're going to get a seat, we need to get there a little bit early. So 4 o'clock, we'll be heading over and probably get here, oh, I don't know, back here, 7.30, 8 o'clock, uh, something like that. And so it'll be a wonderful time to be together and see lots of other brothers and sisters in Christ. Still planning on the blood drive coming up uh, later this month on the 28th, encouraging you to sign up out there in the foyer if you can be a part of that. I wanted to end this little part of our time by just encouraging you to be here on Wednesday nights. You know, I look around and not all of you are here on Wednesday nights as I, you know, take a, attendance and a mental note there. And I want to invite you to come and be with us. We have a class for every single age group. There's a ladies class that has just began a new study in the book of Hosea. I teach in the auditoriums on Wednesday nights. We're beginning the book of Philippians this Wednesday night. So it's a good time if you need kind of a boost to the middle of your week, a peak of the week. I'm inviting you to be with us on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. There's a class for your children, for your teens as well. We have something for everyone. Well, I'm glad that you are here this morning. Let's continue our praise and our worship of God. Can I tell y'all about Little Jesus? I think it's worth sticking around for another minute because not only was it fun, but there was a great message in it that might encourage you right now. So I get this text this past Saturday afternoon from our 19-year-old daughter who also serves as our youth leader here at our church. And she says, hey, can I share something in church in both services tomorrow? You know, right after worship and right before you preach your sermon. And I was like, what you got? And she said, oh, well, you'll see when you get here Sunday. I never had a reason not to trust her, so I said, okay, let's go with it. So I walk in the door on Sunday morning, and this is what I saw. There was a little Jesus everywhere, over the doors and on the decor, 200 of them all around the church to be exact. There was even thermostat Jesus, and there was even hand sanitizer Jesus, and balcony Jesus. And y'all, there was even little Jesus in the bathroom. It seems that the youth decided on Saturday evening to put these all over the church, in which one of them said, you know, in real life, we shouldn't be trying to hide Jesus like this. And our daughter, Emery, said, well, we're not trying to hide him. We're just putting him in places that people least expect to find him. Oh. It's crazy because I found myself in some pretty dark valleys before, and a lot of them have been my own choosing. And I turned around, and I found Jesus in the midst of somewhere that I never dreamed that I would find him. Just like somebody said on Sunday, a little Jesus goes a long way. And almost everybody walked out of this place with a little Jesus on Sunday. And you wouldn't believe how many people have messaged me over the last few days saying, this is such a great reminder that a little Jesus goes a long way. And I have no idea where they got them. So if you want one, Google, I need a little Jesus. And it is true. If you Google, I need a little Jesus, you can find them. As you have seen this morning, uh, uh, this is where I got the idea to hide a bunch of little Jesuses all over that you are welcome to take after church. Uh, we have enough that everyone should be able to have one. So please take one with you today. Uh, I've even had some of the kids have volunteered that if you don't feel like going and finding one, they will gladly go find you one for you. So you can just ask a kid, hey, go find me a little Jesus. Uh, that being said, uh, if you actually follow this guy on TikTok, uh, he has had so many people respond, good and, of course, bad, because it's the internet. Uh, so he has a few other videos talking about this. One is, no, we don't worship these. these. This is just a little toy. It is not the true power of Jesus. Uh, secondly, and this is the one I liked, he was talking about the power this has been, that that video went viral, and other churches, just like ours today, have been doing this all over the place. And he got a message recently uh, you can actually watch this video where he talks about a homeless man passing away, his family coming, and he, they found a little Jesus in his pocket. And they were talking about it, he, where, they, where they thought he got it from this place in Texas, because this church is, I think, in Indiana. And the point he made is, he goes, I know all over the, the country, people right now are doing this. They've been getting messages, videos of people showing them doing it. But the, what he found most powerful is that this little Jesus that they did was just something fun to do. It's just a representation of something, a little reminder of the big Jesus.
that we follow. And so I hope that you will do the same thing. Take pictures, share it with someone. I don't mind buying more if I need to, to give you some, to give to somebody else, because we do. We follow follow a big, loving Jesus. And if it takes a little Jesus to help you remember that or to share with somebody else, I hope that helps you today. So let us continue to praise and worship our big Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. We're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be And he shall find Knock and the door shall be opened unto you We're singing Alleluia, oh, Alleluia Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, every day I want to see you, to see you. I lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Come and open the eyes of my heart. Will I want to see? I do. I want to see you. Come, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Will I want to see you? Yes, I do. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power, your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 holy. Raise the wisdom 
mother, father, who has spoken through his son, and speaking still he calls us to the glorious impossible. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son for the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Love is demonstrated not just as a communicated verbal word. It's demonstrated, not just spoken. It's shown, not just merely written down. When the scriptures tell us that God loves us, it always shows us God's actions that demonstrate that love. In this particular verse that I just read, John wants us to realize that God's love goes first. God demonstrated and shared his love with us before we demonstrated our love for him. He didn't just wait until it was safe to love us. He didn't just wait until we got it all right before he started loving us. Instead, he went first and defined love. And he defined it in a way that was very genuine, and unmistakable even. And it's that love that he showed us that redeems us whenever all hope seems lost, whenever we don't feel worthy, whenever we don't feel that we're ready, or maybe even when we're not actually ready. God is love. And we know this because he loved us first, because he gave his life for us, even when he, whenever we didn't deserve it. And even before we choose him, he still loves us. This one simple verse seems to speak so much but even more so, this action that we're about to do helps us to be reminded of how much love he really has for us. 
By the simple act of taking of this bread, and taking of this fruit of the vine, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made. We remember the broken body on the cross, all of the, the torture that he went through even leading up to that moment, and we remember the blood that was shed, not only because of the whippings that he took, but because of the nails also that it was in hands, and the spear even after his death that pierced his side. This one simple act speaks volumes to the world. And it also speaks volumes to God because he recognizes how much we love his son. At least that's what we should be doing. So I ask at this time that you just put out of your mind anything else that might be going through it. And focus on Christ. Focus on what he did for us. Focus on what these emblems actually mean to you. And the fact that without them... Without that sacrifice that they stand for, we are lost, plain and simple. But because of the fact that he did all those things, we are saved, plain and simple. Let's go to our God in prayer. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, we cannot express to you how much we appreciate what has been done for us. We can't even love you the way that you have loved us. And we know there's even more to come, Father, because as you raised your son from the dead, you will raise us from the grave. And that we will be made new with you in heaven. Father, as we focus our, our minds and our attention to your son and his sacrifice at this moment, I just pray that you would help us to clear our thoughts. I pray that you would help us to take us back to that day, to remember the, the sacrifice that was, that was made, and to remember the joy that was also felt whenever he raised from the dead. Father, help us now to do this in a way that pleases you. And all these things we ask and pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to all do a little experiment with me real quick. I want you to take your hands, turn them over, and look at them. For most of you, what's in there? Nothing. That's what you own. I was thinking about it on the way this morning here, and I was thinking, okay, um, well, I'm getting close to paying my car off. Um, we're at the age in, in, in our life where we're getting close to paying our house off. And I have a neighbor who, he's very quick to remind me 
of what I have. We'll have a conversation and we'll be talking about something and I'll be like, yeah, um, whenever I do this or I do that with my land or whatever, he's like, whose land? Oh, yeah, that's right. At the end of the day, we have nothing. It's all been given to us, all been loaned to us more or less, right? But you do have one thing that God gives you, a choice. A choice about what you're going to do with what he's given you. So think about that a little bit as you prepare to give back to God uh, some of what he's given to you. Whether it's a a true tithe or whether it's a, a portion of what you give, whatever that is, that's for you to determine in your heart. But remember that what you have isn't yours. The choice is yours, but what you have isn't really yours. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, we thank you for providing for us. We thank you for for giving us the things that we need in this life, and for most of us, abundance of it. And we just ask, Father, that you would help us to recognize that it is you who are the giver. And for us to give back to you is, it seems so so fruitless sometimes, Father, and so 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 even pointless at times, because we don't always recognize the value of what it means to give. But Father, we know when we, we provide you what you've given us, you can take that and do so much more with it. As you did with the, the fish and the loaves of bread by the sea for the, the multitude, Father, we know you can do that with our funds as well. And we just ask that you would bless the money that's going to be given here, that it would get, be given to in a way that is pleasing to you and that will be used to spread your gospel throughout the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Fountain I drink from, and oh, is my song. Oh, will let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, is my will now you are good and good, oh, Lord, and you are good. The acre in the wind, oh, is my soul. Oh, let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. The echo of my days, oh, is my soul. Yes, you are Night is holding on 
to me. God He's right there is holding on. Because you are good and good and Lord. And you are good is good and Lord. You are good and Lord. And you are good and Lord. And you are good. Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. He'll never forsake you. Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. He'll never forsake you. Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. For you through your trouble and strife, and he will protect you all the days of your life. He'll never be strong and courageous, and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. Be strong and courageous, and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. He'll never be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. Strong and courageous, and do not be afraid. The Lord goes with you each and every day. Amen. All right, at this time, all the little humans go out that exit door right there. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. No praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise Him. Well, it's good to be together this morning. I just got a text. We've got folks watching from Arkansas this morning. So, hi, Jeremy. Hi, Brandy. 
we're missing them, but we're glad they can view in, as well as folks watching us from lots of different places. So last Sunday, we uh, began a new series of lessons that we're just simply calling If. If. We said that the word if is a conditional conjunction that if, it basically says that if we do this, then God will do that. And we use the passage from 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 to kind of lay the foundation for what we're talking about. For that passage says, if, if my people who are called by my name will uh, humble themselves, and if they will pray and they'll seek my face, they'll turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If God's people will do this, then God will do that. So the word if is just filled with great you know, uh, 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 excitement, but it is a conditional word. But this morning, I want you to think about this word also is a word filled with possibilities. Possibilities. That is that sometimes an if in our lives can open a door to greater things, unexpected things. I guess I want to say God-sized things in your life. And I just want you to dream of that for a moment. I want you to think of that. The word if, if I could approach God if I could understand if in the area of possibilities, that could open my life to things that maybe I could, I could only dream of or I could, I could even pray about. One of the great examples of this is found in the Gospel of Mark. Did you bring your Bible this morning? We're going to be in Mark, the ninth chapter this morning. So as you're turning there, well, I want to kind of set up the story for you. Mark chapter 9. So Jesus has just been up on what we refer to as the Mount of Transfiguration. He takes three of his disciples along with him and he for that brief moment in time basically unveils himself before them. That is that God showers down his true identity and that is His divinity. That Peter, James, and John, though they are so confused about who Jesus is and what Jesus is saying and what He ultimately wants to accomplish in their lives and in in the world today, in this moment, up on this mountain, Jesus shines with all the brilliance of uh, His true identity, and that is that He is God in the flesh. They see this and they experience this and it absolutely blows them away. So much so that they say something like, hey, we don't ever want to leave here. Let's build three shelters and let's just stay here for the rest of our lives. And in a sense, who could blame them, right? I mean, once you've been in the presence of God, once you have been to heaven, I think the last thing you would ever want to do is leave that that place, leave the presence of God, and come back down to this earth. And so they just want to stay where they are and just bask in the glory of God and just enjoy the presence of Jesus for the rest of eternity. And, And that's what they want to do. But Jesus says, no, the work is not done. We've got to go back down off of this mountain, back down into the valley. And that's exactly what they do. And when they get down there, (laughs) Jesus immediately is kind of confronted once again with the the tediousness and the challenge of, of life itself. For he finds his disciples whom he had trained and given enormous power and great opportunity to, he finds them in an argument with a group of people. And they are just arguing and bickering back and forth. And and, and I could just picture Jesus like, oh, why this again? I mean, you know, he's just once again been able to enjoy his divinity in its purest and and most beautiful form, but now he's got to go back to work. Now he's got to get back 
to the day-to-day living. And his disciples are in an argument with a group of people. And Jesus comes down and he's like, what are you guys arguing about? And before he can say anything, before he can get a word in, this guy steps forward and says, listen, listen, Jesus, I brought you my son. And he is so sick, and I was just hoping you would be able to do something to help us. But you weren't here, so I asked your disciples if they could do it. If they could help us, and they've been unable to do anything. And it's just caused a big argument. And I can just imagine, I can just imagine how Jesus was feeling again at this moment. I'm sure he was very disappointed and very upset. I'm sure he's upset with his disciples. Because, I mean, he had had entrusted, he is trying to give them more and more of this kingdom. He's trying to help them understand what the future holds for himself and for them and for the world. And they're just not getting it. And I'm sure that he's upset with the crowd because the crowds were following him all over the place. And they just wanted to see the show. They just wanted to see what will he do next. And they were just enjoying kind of the feast That is Jesus Christ and all the amenities that go along with that. And so Jesus is extremely, extremely upset. And and, and so they brought the child to Jesus. And as soon as the child sees Jesus, the evil spirit, the unclean spirit inside of the child just begins to shriek and to cause havoc. And and it, it causes the child to fall into a seizure. He falls to the ground. He rolls all over the ground. He begins to foam at the mouth. He begins to gnash his teeth. And then Jesus asked the boy's father, he asked him this question. He says, how long has this been going on? How long has this been happening? And then the father said those words that just punch us right in the gut. He says, this has been going on his entire life. He's been like this his whole life, and every parent just groans inwardly because there's no pain like the pain of seeing your child hurting and you can't do anything to help. You try, but nothing seems to help. Well, I want to pick up at the story in verse 22 at that point. Your Bible says that the father, you know, the father says, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. Oh. I mean, as a parent, I just shriek when I hear those words. When, when you think about this is what this, is, this evil spirit, this unclean spirit has done to my child. It often throws him into the fire. We can't even take him around a fire hardly. And we can't take him to the water because he'll just throw him into the water and he, he may drown. And, and then he says the word. Then he says the word. But if, but if you can do anything, Take pity on us and help us. Oh, I mean, don't you just appreciate this father? I mean, don't you just, you, you feel his heart? Your, your, and your heart just goes out to him. If you can, please help us. You can sense his desperation. You can see he's, he has nowhere else to turn. I'm sure he's tried anything. He's tried everything. And nothing has helped. But if... If you can do anything, we'd be so appreciative. We'd be so thankful. And Jesus comes back. If, (laughs) if I can, if you can, Jesus said, Jesus, everything is, and here's our word, everything is possible for him who believes. Now that sounds right. That sounds right. I mean, that's what we've we've been taught our entire lives. Just believe. Just just have faith. So immediately, verse 24, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I love this guy. I love this man so much. I love his honesty. I love his faith. 
I do believe. I love you, Jesus. I've heard about you. I've come to see you. We've watched you do things. I've listened to you teach. I do love you, Jesus. I, I, I believe in you. And, and, and yet, Jesus, sometimes, sometimes I struggle. Sometimes I just don't know. I, I have doubts sometimes. I, I'm sure he's saying something like, I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of that at all. But it's true. I've been dealing with this child. I've been dealing with my son this way his whole life. It has put such a strain on my marriage. It has caused us financially to just be turned upside down. I, I believe. Yes, Jesus, I believe. But, but sometimes, I just don't know. I just don't know. Let me ask you a question. What is faith? What is faith? You've probably heard a preacher at some point or a well-meaning Christian say something like, listen, all you got to do is believe. you got to pray. And when you're not getting what you're looking for, pray harder. Just believe more and more and more. And so most of us have kind of tried that, hadn't we? we? We've tried, but it just doesn't always seem to work. And uh, you don't get the answer that you've been looking for. I've been waiting all week long to tell you something, and I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you in the next couple of minutes, because I think it's so important. I, I, I believe with all of my heart that faith is not the absence of doubt. Faith is not the absence of doubt. When Jesus says everything is possible for those who believe, it's tempting to think, as I said, I just need to believe more, and then good things will start happening to me. But that's just not always true, is it? It's not necessarily the size of your faith. It's the one you have faith in. That's it. Do you remember when Jesus taught that if you had the faith of, a si of the size of a mustard seed? Well, that's small. I mean, that's as small as you can. This tiny little bitty seed. Jesus said if you had even that much faith, great things are possible in your life. You can move a mountain, he says. You could move a mountain if you just had the faith. And that's not a lot of faith. That's not huge faith. That's not tremendous faith. That's, he's saying if you just had the small faith, incredible things could happen in your life. This man had belief, but he also had unbelief at the same time. And Jesus still brings about the healing. That's curious, isn't it? He believed, but he also admits and acknowledges, I'm challenged. My faith sometimes gets turned upside down. Sometimes I have doubts. So what do we learn about faith? Faith is not the absence of doubt. Faith is choosing to trust God. Faith is choosing to trust God. It is an acknowledgement. I'm not in control here. The best example that I can give you in all of the Bible is found in Mark chapter 14, a little bit later in this letter. Mark chapter 14. So here it is. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and He is stressed out. He is worried, so worried, He falls down on His knees, and He begins to talk to God. And in verse 35, listen to what He says. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, here you go, if possible, if possible, the hour might pass from him. He says, Abba, Father, here you go again, I know everything is possible for you. Everything is possible. Take this cup from me. Take this from me. I mean, he's about to go to the cross. He's about to endure nails being driven through his hand. The flogging and the beating. Oh, 
I've only watched the movie The Temptation of the Christ one time, but that was enough. It's sketched into my mind for eternity's sake. That beating and that horrible experience. And Jesus knows this is just hours away. Everything is possible for you, God. Everything is. So take this cup from me. But here's the key part of the verse, isn't it? Here's the key part of the prayer. Yet. Yet. Not what I will, but what you will. Jesus chose to trust God in spite of his concerns. Jesus chose to trust God even though he may not get the answer that he's necessarily looking for at that moment. I'm still going to trust God. And that, my friends, is faith. That's what faith is. I will be God's person. I will trust God. I will believe even though I don't have all the T's crossed and the I's dotted. Even though I'm not certain of how this is going to work out. I want God to receive the glory. I want God to receive the praise. I will trust Him no matter what happens here. That is a faith-filled prayer that chooses to submit to the will of God. Jesus had faith in God And he still went to the cross anyway. It's very clear. Take it away. And who can blame him for that, right? Who can blame him for that? But he trusted and he still went to the cross. This father said to Jesus, I do believe. Please help me overcome my unbelief. To be a Christian does not mean you have no doubts. To be a Christian means you trust God with your doubts. And that's what this man is doing. That's exactly what he's doing. Watch what happens to this man and his son. Verse 25, I'm back in uh, Mark 9, verse 25. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked and convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet And he stood up, and I say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's what I wanted to happen for this man and his son. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for helping this father and son. This father came to Jesus with a question, if you can do anything, if you can, take pity on us and help. And that if opened the door. That doubt-filled if, that uncertain if, that if that was built upon, I trust, I believe, I know, but I'm struggling here. I'm, I, I don't have everything figured out. That if opened the door to amazing possibilities and he goes on this incredible adventure with God. It's beautiful. Well, there's one more little thing that I want you to get out of this story. Uh, If you continue reading verse 28. So after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, well, why couldn't we drive it out? (laughs) And here's what Jesus said in reply. This kind can come out only by prayer. They weren't able to cast the evil spirit out. You know why? Why? Because they had turned to the human side of things. They were trying to accomplish a task. They were trying to check something off the list. They were trying to utilize whatever power they had been given and their heart and their mind that it wasn't in the right place. They were trying to do something religious. And it just simply wasn't going to work. The only way, the absolute only way this was going to be accomplished, Jesus says, is I want to teach you something about faith. 
In order to do this, you've got to do something you failed to do. And that is you've got to trust God. You've got to trust God if this is going to work out. We don't have a shortage of plans and goals and visions around here. We don't have, I'll guarantee you in your life, you probably know exactly what you're going to do this afternoon. I would bet you I could sit down with just about anybody in this room and you could tell me, with with the exception of just a couple of hours here or there, the entire week, what you're going to do, where you're going to be. We've got it all figured out. We plan it down to the minutes. We have been told how valuable our time is, that it's the greatest commodity of the 21st century. I mean, we have scheduled, we've gone from daytimers and, and calendars to we got everything on our phone that's beeping like crazy, reminding us of this and of that. We've got everything scheduled and planned. And the downside of that is we think that we can do our faith the same way. We just simply assume that God is on our time schedule, that He wants the same goals and dreams and aspirations for my life. And we put God in this little bitty box and ask Him and pretty much demand that He conform to my will. Jesus teaches us and this man teaches us, sometimes you just got to believe And even in belief, it may not actually work out the way that you think it's going to, but ultimately, that is the promise, and that is our faith. It's going to work out. I'm going to be reunited with that loved one. God's will is going to be done. He is going to receive glory. The kingdom is going to continue to grow and expand. God's will be done. And that is faith. That is true faith. And it takes you on an incredible adventure with God. You have to want God's glory more than your own. you got to want God's glory more than just what you want. you got to trust God more than yourself. Or as Jesus would say to God in this prayer, not my will, but your will. you got to be able to say that. What is prayer? Prayer is simply turning the control over to God. Letting loose. Letting God. We should make our plans. We should put together our plan. We should organize things. There's no benefit of being slothful. There's no benefit in being lazy. There's no benefit in just living a come what may lifestyle. That's not what we're talking about. But we are talking about ultimately you just have to let God be in control. And, and, and there are mysteries, but faith is just trusting. I believe, just help me with my unbelief. It's just turning all the possibilities over to God. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. We're going to sing one more song in just a second, but I want you to stand and I want to do more and more thing with you this morning. So if you will, please stand. What I've asked for you to do is just bow your head right where you're standing. Bow your head, close your eyes, and I, and I, and I want to ask you a couple of questions. And it goes something like this. And you can answer in your heart, you can raise your hand, whatever you want to do. This is between you and God because nobody else is looking. How many of you would have to say this morning, Jesus... I'm struggling right now. I'm just, I'm struggling. (laughs) I'm trying to do my best, but I'm just confused. I'm I'm not where I want to be. I'm just kind of struggling. But how many of you can also say, yes, I am struggling right now. But God, I trust you with all my heart. My eyes are on Jesus. I feel like I'm losing control. Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe it's kids. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's your 
finances. Maybe it's a temptation. I'm struggling. I know the right thing. I really feel like I know the right thing to do. But I'm struggling. But in the midst of the struggle, I just, I'm trusting God. Can you say that? I'm just trusting God. Well, I believe if you can say that, if your heart, if that's where your heart is, I believe with all of my heart, God will take you on a great adventure. And if you can just keep saying, not my will, but your will, and don't put any strings attached to that, just truly say, God, help me to submit to your will. Help me to see your will. Help me to agree to your will. Help me with my doubts. I think God can take a heart like that and do an incredible thing. Father God, how we bless your glorious name. How we love you with all of our heart. And yet sometimes we feel our heart is so divided. We sense that there is confusion. We read our Bibles, we come to church, we say our prayers. And yet there's still pain and there's still hurt and there's still struggles and there's still questions. Father, the first thing I want to say this morning is thank you for making room for questions and for doubts and for struggles. Thank you, God. And I pray for all those that raised their hands this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would make the way very clear as they trust in you. As we turn our eyes upon Jesus. Oh, I pray, oh God, I pray, Father God, that you would reveal and you would strengthen us and your presence would grow greater in our lives. And whether we get what we want or not, whether we get what we think we need or not, we're just going to give you a lot of praise and we're going to give you a lot of glory and we're just going to stay focused on you. And I know in doing so, ours is the victory. We bless you, God. We praise you. We love you. We want you to be honored. We want you to be glorified. We want to give you some praise this morning. As we keep our eyes on Jesus, in his name we pray. Amen. And amen. If if we can help you this morning, You come as we sing this final song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.